Uh, when Al Snow did a shoot interview with us last year, he brought up uh, his WCW tryout and mentioned that he felt that you could have been part of the reason why he wasn't ultimately signed by the company. Uh, do you have any recollection what that was all about? I didn't when you talked to me last time, but I went back in the interim and uh, went ahead and looked at his interview and the circumstances. And I do recall a little bit, not, you know, it was a long time ago, but um, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you the, the story as I remember it, but uh, since I'm on assignment here in Orlando for WrestleMania weekend, I'm going to make it one of my goals to find Al Snow, and we're going to hatch this thing out once and for all, we're going to hug it out once and for all, because uh, I think it was a big misunderstanding. I was, in, I was a stooge, really. I mean, if I'm being honest, I told you that in the last interview. I don't know if I said stooge, but that's what they called you in the wrestling business when you walked around head and pet had people sign papers and releases, and if that's how I was going to get my start, then cool. And um, so as I had mentioned in the last interview, one of my jobs was to get the new talent uh, that wasn't under contract or the enhancement talent to sign releases. Well, it was a standard release. It basically said, if you get hurt, we don't have to pay for, uh, cover you, which wasn't worth the paper it was printed on, quite frankly. Uh, and it said that we have the right to put you on television and do anything we can forever and ever and ever uh, which is why when the WC footage, WCW footage was sold to WWE Network and all these people said, well, you don't have on paper that I said you could use my WCW footage. Well, yeah, they probably have somewhere in the vaults those releases, but I stray. Uh, Al Snow was there to do a tryout match. Uh, I went into the dressing room and I introduced myself. Uh, and I believe I said, I need you to fill out this, uh, this release form. And he said, well, what is it? I said, it's just standard release. Uh, he said, okay, can I read it over? I said, sure, but it's just a standard release. You know, it's not a big deal. Everybody signs them. And if you don't sign them, then, I, then, you know, then they won't be able to use you. So I don't care. Take as much time as you want is my recollection. One of the agents, I want to say Kevin Sullivan, but I could be wrong, saw that and saw that there was some tension there, asked me what happened. And I just said, he just wants to read over the release, and wasn't, there was not, not, not a big deal. Um, it happened sometimes where some of the talent wanted to read it over. I've even had times where I had talent want to call their lawyer. And, you know, it, it's, it's really simple. If you don't want to sign it, then, you know, unless WCW lawyer waived it, which wasn't going to happen, you know, somebody doing a tryout match, they just weren't going to let you in the ring. It was just a legal matter that had to be done. So... Uh, whoever that was, Kevin Sullivan, it might have been Terry Taylor, went over to Al and said, just want to make sure everything's okay. And I think Al in that thought, in that situation thought that I went back and stooged him off, that he didn't want to sign the release. That's totally untrue. Uh, but if there was any misunderstanding, uh, I'm going to try to find Al and I'm going to apologize to him. I'm going to tell him the real story. And maybe, uh, maybe I don't remember something. So maybe I owe him a, a bigger apology. But uh, since I'm here... And uh, I wanted to get, uh, get back to you with a little update uh, of what happened. And uh, hopefully we'll, get the, uh, we'll, we'll end this during WrestleMania weekend 2017. Do you think it was better for Al Snow's career that he wasn't signed by WCW at that time? You know, it was hit or miss. You know, some of the guys that came in, you know, they, 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 they didn't have anything for them. I mean, look at Jerry Lynn. I remember they couldn't get, think of a name that could get cleared. So one of the uh, bookers at the time said, call him Mr. JL, and I, I can't say this. I can say this now. I couldn't say that then. I cringed. Mr. JL. I mean, he looks like Jerry Lynn. He flies like Jerry Lynn. He wrestles like Jerry Lynn. You want to make him some, uh, somebody that, um, you know, that the kids love, like some cartoon character, and you're going to call him Mr. JL? In my mind, he was dead before he started, and I knew it, and I was just some guy that was handing out papers to be signed. So a lot of it was just circumstance. You know, sometimes it fell into the right circumstance where you fell in the right feud and the fans clicked, and sometimes it was just one of those things where they couldn't get a legal name cleared. They had to put you on TV. So somebody said, Mr. J. Allen, it was dead in the water. It just, I, I can't answer that question. Um, uh, back then, it was just a crapshoot. You never knew.